Happy Monday to you. Welcome back to the Front Porch. It is time once again for another episode of Monday Meditations. Here we are in the final week of 2022, getting ready for the new year. Just celebrated the holiday season of Christmas with family and friends, and I hope you're doing well and you're ready to spend a little more time meditating on God's Word as we continue to walk through the book of Proverbs. We're in chapter 16, going to be looking at verses 27 through 33, the end of the chapter, and meditate a little bit more on God's Word and the plan God has for His people through the wise man Solomon teaching his son how to to be more productive and be successful in life. And that's do it God's way, listening to what God has to say. And so let's go ahead and dig into this text and spend a little time meditating. And I hope that this uh, study will bless your week and that you're ready to serve God more faithfully. He says in verse 27, an ungodly man diggeth up evil and in his lips there is a, as a burning fire. An ungodly man, someone who's not striving to walk in the ways of light, someone who's not considering God's plan and the purpose in life, just fearing God and keeping his commandments, which is the whole of man, Ecclesiastes 12, 13. He's an ungodly man. He digs up evil. He puts forth effort in finding evil things to do, but he says in his lips, there is as a burning fire. And that's a concept of destruction that comes from fire as it tears down and destroys and breaks down the things that are good. This is what he lives for. This is what he works for. And he's causing much trouble and much strife in his life and the lives of those around him because he's an ungodly man. He's not walking in the ways of God. Verse 28 says, A froward man soweth strife, and a whisperer separateth chief friends. A froward or a perverse man, he sows strife. He goes around causing these problems and digging up, as the man before says, he's digging up things and causing this division in relationships. Even those who are closest friends, chief friends, this whisperer, this gossip. Gossip is one of those things that we hear about all the time, talked about, but we never seem to really get around to doing anything about The best way to stop a gossip is to not give them an ear. And realizing the source of gossip comes from a froward or a perverse person, an ungodly person. And the end result will separate chief friends, the primary friends you should have in your life, especially brethren, those who are brothers and sisters in Christ. Verse 29 says, A violent man entices his neighbor and leads him into the way that is not good. He's a violent man. Why violence? Because that's what we're talking about. To pull someone away from doing what's right, there's a violent end to that. The ways of sin is death. That's destruction. The wages of sin, Romans 6, 23, is death. And so this violent man is one who entices his neighbor and leads him into a way that's not good, a way away from God. Saying things like, well, it's not that big a deal. It's not that big of a deal. It doesn't matter if you do this. God wants you to be happy. And those those attitudes and those dispositions of heart have led many people down the primrose path into a way that is not good, as the text says. And he calls that person a violent person. Verse 30 says, He shutteth his eyes to devise froward things. Moving his lips bringeth evil to pass. He shuts his eyes to devise perverse, forward things. He's closing his eyes to think, what else can I get into that's perverse, that's evil? He spends so much time and energy trying to find things that are wrong. Most of the people who are ungodly, who are violent men, who are perverse and forward, as we've been talking about these people in this text, if they would put just a fraction of the energy that they put into doing things that are wrong, into doing what's right. Imagine the good that could be done. I think about Saul of Tarsus and the energy that he put forth in persecuting the church. God used that energy for good as he became, of course, Paul the Apostle. And so he shuts his eyes to devise, to contemplate, to come up with and concoct ways that are perverse and things that are perverse. He moves his lips. He brings evil to pass. The things that he says brings evil to pass. But then he contrasts going from all of these evil things and negative things he's been talking about to something that's good. He says in verse 31, the hoary head or the gray hair is a crown of glory if it be found in the way of righteousness. Now, there is a condition in that, absolutely. 
with the Proverbs, there are conditions to these situations. It's just, just because a person is older, gray hair, and has spent many years in this world doesn't mean that they are wise. It doesn't mean that they're doing what's right or that they're worthy of glory in this sense. He says, if, if it's found in the way of righteousness, the way of righteousness and doing what's right is what brings glory to young or old alike. He then says in verse 32, he that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. Better than a strong and powerful person is one who is slow to anger. And he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh the city. Bringing the spirit, bringing the soul, bringing the inner man under control, that's better than someone who has the power to overthrow a city. It would take might, a lot of might, to overthrow a city. But this person who rules the spirit, uh, he's better than that person. This person who's slow to anger, he's better than a mighty man. Then verse 33, the lot is cast into the lap, but the whole disposing thereof is of the Lord. The lot is cast into the lap, but the whole is disposing therefore thereof is of the Lord. God is in charge of everything. We cast our lots. We cast our part. We do our part in this world. But to God be the glory. God is in charge of everything. God is the one that's going to be behind everything. God is the one who's going to, to judge in the end. And we have to stand before him. He gives us his word and tells us what our part is. Be wise. Choose the right path. Cast your lot in with God. Make sure that your light is walking with him walking in the light, being the righteous person, being the hoary head that is worthy of glory, not being the violent man, not the one who shuts his eyes and devises evil thoughts and perverse thoughts, not the ungodly man who digs up evil, uses his mouth in a way to entice those to do wrong. We need to be those who encourage doing what's right, walking in the light. As we bring 2022 to a close, Let's strive one another with one another to help one another be what God would have us to be, be the light to the world around us. When we go into 2023, let's go into it with an attitude of, I want to be what God wants me to be, and I want to help all others around me be what God wants them to be as well. And that's something on which we can meditate this Monday and every day. May God bless you till we meet again. Mm -hmm.